guys, it's Kate. Welcome back to the channel. Two years ago, I shared my favorite frugal living habits and I thought, you know what? Let's revisit this question. What are my favorite frugal living habits now compared to then? If you never saw that video, I will leave it at the very end of this. So don't even give it a second thought until the end. I'll leave it right on the end screen for you to watch after. But today, let's talk about my favorite frugal habits currently that I'm practicing. Number one is using products conservatively. I do this in regards to literally everything. Shampoo, conditioner, soap, toothpaste, everything that we use in the house. I'm always trying to use it conservatively, dish soap. And I'm always looking for solutions to use a little less or a little smarter. And actually I did find one thing that I'm gonna share with you. I'm gonna put it, I'll either put a picture or I'll insert the video right here. It's a shampoo bar. So most shampoo comes in a bottle, right? We think of shampoo, we think of a shampoo bottle, squeezing that. This is actually in a bar. Some of you might have seen this before, some of you haven't, but I personally had never used a shampoo bar and the pros of using this thing, first of all, the one that I picked smells amazing. If you like peppermint, it's super strong peppermint, which I quite enjoy. So that was one thing, the smell was fantastic. The second thing is it reduced waste because it's not a plastic bottle, it's actually a recyclable little box and you'll see in the video. The next thing is it lasts longer. This thing I've had for a little bit, I've used it several times. I don't use it every single time um, because I'm not quite sure what I think about how my hair comes out after as far as the final product. Now, this is also because my hair is very fine and it's a little bit on the longer side. If I had short, short hair, I feel like I would use this thing all the time. It lathers up really nice if you like a lather. Some people don't care about that. I happen to care about that. So it lathers up really nice. And the last really pro I would say is it's easier to travel with. You don't have to worry about like the liquids on the plane because it's a bar. It's like a bar soap. The one thing I will say is when I rinse it out, I feel like, I don't know if I'm not rinsing it enough or if it's just the texture of my hair. I feel like it makes it just a little, like a teeny greasy. So if you have really dry hair, maybe it would be fine. I'm not sure, but I really enjoy, like I said, the smell and the other benefits, and I haven't used it enough to be 100% sure. But if you've ever used a shampoo bar, can you guys let me know in the comments what kind did you get if you remember? I'll leave the link to mine in case you wanna try it. I'm also trying to teach Caden how to be conservative with things, like just when he's in the shower, not just he has one of those poofs and not just, you know, spraying it everywhere. But I also don't want to impose my weirdness on other people. Let me give you another example of my frugal weirdness. And this might not be weird at all, but I made some nachos the other night, which were fantastic. Nachos with cheese, sour cream, guacamole. Hello, right? Delicious. I got to the bottom of the bag and at the bottom of the bag, there were crumbs, obviously, like sometimes at the end of your chip bag is like crumbs at the bottom. And I couldn't, most people would probably just take it and throw it out. I couldn't do it. For some reason in my mind, I'm like, okay, I can put these crumbs to good use. In the past, I have used them to make like a burrito bowl. I'll do like scrambled eggs, little sour cream cheese, and then I will take those crumbs and sprinkle them on top for that crunch that just really gives you some impact. And then the other night when I was making the nachos, I was like, well, I'm still kind of hungry because it was at the end of the bag. I didn't have as much as I normally would. So I just took the crumbs, put it in a bowl, stirred it up with some the same stuff, the cheese, sour cream, and the guacamole. And I just had like a stir of it. And honestly, I don't know if that sounds weird, but it was delicious. It was almost the same thing, but not like the big chips. And so I'm just telling you, sometimes you gotta creatively consume what you have to conserve your stuff and utilize it to its fullest. These are just 
That's just a small example, but it was delicious and I used every crumb. Next one is to eat your own food at home. You don't have to get fancy and cook. You can if you want to. You can make your own food, but using up your groceries instead of going out to eat saves me so much money. I just talked about this in a video a couple times ago, how I had not prepared and I went out and got lunch and it cost me so much money. Now, I told you in a video recently too, groceries are kind of expensive right now, but going out to eat is even higher. Which also brings me to something I just wanted to talk about with you guys as far as the food budget goes. I was sharing with you that my going out to eat budget is in my lifestyle budget. As you guys know, if, or if you don't know, I have savings, household, giving, and lifestyle. And a lot of you told me that you just put your going out to eat with your groceries because it's food. Now, everybody's got to do what they're comfortable with. And if that works for you, that's awesome. For me personally, I do not put the going out to eat budget with my groceries because the way I have aligned my budget is the household budget is the essentials and the lifestyle is a choice. Now, you can do your food however you want, of course, but for me personally, I don't need to go out to dinner. That's a lifestyle option you can choose, but it's totally not necessary to get by. So that's why I put that in my lifestyle. It's a choice, it's fun, it's on the complete optional side. The groceries that keep food in our bellies, that keep things running in the house, those are the essentials for me. So that's why they're divided. And I just wanted to clarify that for you because some of you guys are like, food's food, what's the difference? That's what the difference is for me. If push comes to shove, I have to choose groceries over going out to dinner, the prices being a little bit up because obviously you're out to a nice restaurant or any restaurant, adding the tip, adding the gas to get there. The whole thing is an experience. So I choose to keep that under my choices, under my lifestyle. That's just how I do it. Again, you guys have to do whatever feels right and whatever flows right in your budget that you're comfortable with. So if you lump all the food together, that's your choice. Or maybe some of you are like, I don't even get a lot of groceries, I just go out to eat. And however you do it, do you boo. Like I always say, do you boo. But if you're looking to kind of cut back on your food budget, perhaps try to find some creative groceries you can get instead of going out to eat, because my gosh, it piles up really quick. The next favorite frugal habit of mine is to have a part-time job or side hustle on top of your full-time job. I know this is organized very differently amongst families, and I have, if you guys have ever watched me, you know that I have almost always, 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 always had a second job on top of my full-time job, which could mean one of two things. One, I'm not finding the right job to just take care of it all in one fell swoop, but the other thing is, I like to make more money if I have the time available or if I don't have the time available, how can I make this work so that I can, so that I can make this extra money? I still, I'm not even kidding. When I see help wanted signs, my eyes still go to them and I look and I see, mm, I wonder what they're looking for over there. Is that something I could do? I swear. Right now I am not looking for more work. I have a full-time job. My side hustles include YouTube. I, it's weird even calling it a side hustle, but it is. Mary Kay, and I. that's so part-time guys, that's just like I have a few customers that come to me or you can order online, but it's what I use. So I'm like, why not sell it also? Cause it's my favorite. And then of course, choreography. Now that we can be back in the dance studios, I am choreographing currently three pieces for different dance groups. And that's one of my other passions, if you don't know that about me. And luckily, especially with dance and YouTube, it happens to be two things that I totally 
love doing and I can make money doing it. So I'm just thrilled to do both of those things. I love coming here each week and reading your comments and being with you and hearing all about your frugal stories and how I can be of service to you in any way, answering questions, sharing my experiences. I'm honored and delighted all at the same time to do it. Many of you ask, you know, what are the best side hustles? I can't tell you because I don't want to do side hustles that I hate, to be honest. If I'm going to do something on the side or part time, I want it to be something that I at least a little bit enjoy. I know a few of you have shared with me that you're doing DoorDash and I think that's awesome. I've been seeing on TikTok that that's actually quite lucrative. So I don't know if anyone has started doing that yet. Let me know in the comments if you've tried DoorDash. Is it worth it? Is it not? Let the K squad know. The next favorite frugal habit that I have put into play is batch errands, batch cook, batch film if I ever can. Batching anything, time, energy, and money wise, I think is an amazing idea. And you will hear it from other productive people in this world that batching things is the way to go. I've told you if I go grocery shopping, I'm probably going to go get gas, go to the post office, everything while I'm out. I don't like, I, I almost will never be at the house and be like, oh, I need to go to the post office and just go to the post office. Or sitting at home on the couch with my feet propped up and be like, oh, I didn't go to the bank and leave the house on a day where I'm supposed to be home to go to the bank. No, no, no. You batch that. Batch it. I'm going to put it on a t-shirt. Batch that. Batch that, K-Squad. Seriously, if you're making spaghetti, make extra spaghetti and then put it in Tupperware for the next day for your lunch. Batch cook. You YouTubers out there, my YouTubers that have channels, you might make a couple videos in one sitting if you can. It's a little bit challenging at first if you're not in the routine of doing it. But anything that you can do in a little sequence that makes sense, that is the same like-minded task, do it, batch that. My next favorite frugal habit is no spend Sundays. This is a really popular one with you guys, so let's talk about it. No spend Sundays takes the pressure off my wallet and myself by just taking a day out of the week that I don't intend to spend. And it just, just, just as God intended for us to have a day of rest, I give my wallet a rest on Sundays. I try to plan around not spending on Sundays if at all possible. Like for example, grocery shopping, it would make a lot of sense for me to shop on Sunday, but honestly, I don't want to. Instead, now this might be a weird mentality. I haven't really expressed that this is how I think about it, but I'm gonna tell you right now, Mondays kind of suck, right? Like Mondays in general, nobody's like, yay, Monday. I don't know, maybe, are you into Mondays? Um, I heard this song once and he says, it's a Monday, my day. And I'm like, who says that? But honestly, Monday is my day for doing the things that I'm not that pumped about, like grocery shopping. Monday's gonna be a pain anyway, <laughs> right? Like it's Monday, like who's pumped about Monday? So when I leave work, we just go grocery shopping then and just get it over with. So we do all the things that we're not that crazy about on Monday. And then come Tuesday, hello, it's a free way of fun. Yeah, I've never really articulated that before, but that is my current plan. That's what I currently do and I love it. And then coming into Monday, you come in with all your fresh groceries and all that stuff. I usually try to get enough stuff for like closer to two weeks, but then I go every week for like milk and produce. Oh, like this week we went grocery shopping on Monday and I spent $175, which some of you are not shocked by that, but most of you guys know I usually spend less than that. So this was like a big grocery shopping week because I had to get everything. You know those weeks where you're out of everything? Well, that was this week. And it's fine, because honestly, next week, I won't have to buy that much. It'll be probably milk, produce, maybe a loaf of bread, and probably cat food, because isn't my life about getting cat food and litter? And coffee, and creamer, and what else? 
What can you never leave the grocery store without? Please leave it down below in the comments. What is your one must have item when you go to the grocery store? Like without it, the world feels like it will stop. Okay, those are my favorites currently. Please let me know in the comments also, what is your favorite frugal habit currently? And if you haven't seen my other video yet, I'll leave it somewhere around here for you to watch. If you like this kind of content, please hit subscribe and the thumbs up. It helps me greatly in the YouTube algorithm to get this video to others that want to live frugally and have fun doing it. Love you guys. See you next week. Bye.